Hey everybody, welcome back to Urology 101. I'm James Farrell. Urology 101 is my video blog. It's on common topics in urology, and they are often taboo or embarrassing just because we deal with sex organs a lot. My content's focused on getting you some useful medical knowledge that you can apply. In this video and all my other videos, you can find on my website, which is urology101.com, and the first part of that is spelled Y-O-U-R. All the videos are on YouTube as well. Please check them out there if you need to. And I post most days on Instagram. Great content, urology 101 is the name. Please check that out, it's a shorter format. With that, let's move into today's topic. And for a couple weeks going forward, I wanna spend some time on and off on prostate cancer. I'm gonna to have to break it down into sections. Prostate cancer is really prevalent, like 12 to 15% of guys are gonna deal with this at some point in their life. So it's a really worthwhile topic and it is clear as mud. I mean, understanding prostate cancer right now is about as simple as sitting down and doing a corporation's taxes by yourself. It's really, really hard. And so it takes a little while to really get a lot of good information to you. And I'm not sure that we really get a lot of that. So the first part of this is talking about PSA, which is prostate-specific antigen, which is a blood test. Only the prostate cells make this protein. And it's one of the ways that we screen people to identify whether we are concerned about needing to biopsy them for prostate cancer. So if PSA makes sense to you, great. Hang out here, and we're going to go forward in this conversation. If PSA is a little uncertain in your mind, then um, please check out a video that I did a number of weeks ago. It is on my website and YouTube. It's called Hey Hey PSA, and it'll give five or six minutes on PSA, some of the things that make it go up, down, why we care about it, and hopefully fill in a couple gaps if you have them. So let's start right at the position where we would think that either somebody has said that your PSA is high and it's concerning for prostate cancer or somebody has done a rectal exam felt your prostate examined it and also said you know I'm a little concerned I think we should do a biopsy now the reason it goes this way is because at some point what we need is tissue from an organ to look for cancer or whatever we're looking for so a biopsy is just getting a little section of tissue from an organ so that we can better understand that organ a lot of times we do biopsies for cancer, but it's not the only reason. For prostate biopsies, it does happen to be the main only reason to biopsy a prostate. And unfortunately, the easiest, most common way to do a prostate biopsy is actually by placing an ultrasound probe in your rectum and then doing it through that because the prostate sits if, right in front of the rectum. So if the rectal wall is like right here, the prostate sits right there. Now. It is characteristically called the size of a walnut, which is pretty small, I mean, it's like that. And most people don't really have walnuts at hand. So I tell people to try and think of a very, very small apple because it, it is three-dimensional and it, it sort of looks like that. And when we do a prostate biopsy, we need to get a handful of tissue specimens from that because of the three-dimensionality and the size of it. Prostate cancer doesn't grow as just one cancer in the middle and grow outward. What it does is it tends to grow in spots. So most people, when, when we find cancer and we take out prostates for cancer, there will be six, seven, ten tumors in somebody's prostate. So we don't just take one sample and get out of there. What we end up doing is taking 12. And sometimes we'll take more, sometimes less, but usually we will take 12 right up front and we take the same 12 every time because 80 or 90% of prostate cancer comes from the specific areas where we're biopsying and using this what's called template, okay? Or it's a systematic biopsy. Those are just phrases that we'll use back and forth. Now, how do we do the biopsy? Okay, it is, like I said, with an ultrasound probe. The ultrasound is about the size of our thumb and it uses sound waves so that we can see things in what's called real time, meaning that as we move the ultrasound, we can see different parts of the prostate. That helps us guide the needle to where we need to do the biopsies. Now, yes, it is, it's, it is uncomfortable, and I can't really sugarcoat that or get around that. Okay? The process of the ultrasound probe going in is not enjoyable for most people. And so the actual biopsy part, while it isn't that painful at all, the whole process and everything around it is really abnormal for guys. The most comforting thing I can say is that overall it's very well tolerated. It is a short process, four or five minutes, and if you got some good buddies, you can have some jokes about this. And you know what? One out of four or five guys in this country is going to run into this conversation. So it is not something that is rare and don't feel that you're being put in this position that is really um, something that is unique and, and never done to people. So it is something that's common and I hope that you have somebody who you have a lot of confidence in going forward with you. Now, what happens is that you're on your side 
And then we end up placing the probe inside the rectum, take some measurements of the prostate, put in some local anesthesia, take our 12 samples, and we're finished. Most people don't really say that it actually is painful with the biopsies or anything. The, the biopsy needle is what's called spring-loaded, which means that you're going to hear a bit of like a pop or a snap. And that's not a painful thing, but it throws people off. So do ask whoever's doing it to just sort of let you hear it once or twice. Most of us will do that anyways, so that you're accustomed to what you're going to hear. And, you know, a lot of times, honestly, we're telling jokes in it. It's, you make it as enjoyable or as jovial and funny of a process as you can because it's not normal. Everybody knows that. That's the white elephant in the room, right? So you just do the best you can with it and tell whatever jokes that we can. Now, some insurance companies will actually pay for you to be asleep for this or at least in twilight in the same way that people are with colonoscopies. And some urologists will do that. Sometimes these are done at surgery centers. So if that's something that you want, definitely ask your urologist if that's something that's possible because okay, some places are set up for that and some are not. If they're not, try not to have too much anxiety about this because it is something that was always done with people awake and done in a way that worked out well for everybody long term without having to do anesthesia and, and you being asleep and stuff. Now, regarding some of the risks, there are a couple. The main risk is an infection in your pelvis okay, and a urinary tract infection. So for that, before the biopsy, definitely you will get an antibiotic. Do not do a biopsy without having received an antibiotic. That is something that the American Urologic Association strongly supports. Some urologists will have you do three days, some just one. Sometimes there are reasons that we actually want to use IV or intramuscular antibiotics beforehand, and that's because there's resistance to antibiotics out there. So sometimes that actually gets into the conversation. A lot of urologists will have you do an enema or two the morning of the actual biopsy. And that also is mostly to reduce your chance of infection, but also just make sure that everything is kind of clear and it's easy to see the prostate. So not the most comfortable things, but they're important and they'll drop your risk of infection down below 2%. So long-term after the biopsy, well not long-term, for a couple days after the biopsy, we're looking for fevers. Fevers, call your urologist, just get in touch with them. If you feel terrible in the middle of the night, head into an ER because really what you'll probably need is a couple days of antibiotics in the hospital and then you can get home, finish off the antibiotics, and you'll be okay. The other things that we care about, um, we don't usually want people to be on aspirin, so talk with your doctor about whether aspirin and something called Plavix, if you're on them, if they're things that they want you off, or if it's stuff that you're even safe to stop using. So make that a conversation point. Another thing that applies here is that the biopsy itself is going to mean that you are probably going to have some blood in your rectum for about three or four days after the biopsy. You can have some blood in your urine, for up to a few weeks, and a lot of us will say you can have blood in the ejaculate up to about six or eight weeks. And that's just because a lot of the ejaculate comes from the seminal vesicles in the prostate, and sometimes as it goes out, it's just gonna pull some red blood cells with it. It looks really concerning when you see it, but it is not something to be overly concerned about. It's something that's very common after the biopsies. Now, after biopsy, it takes one to two weeks to get results back, okay? From there, the outcomes are either no cancer, normal prostate, Sometimes you can see what are called atypical cells, which often will mean that we want to repeat a biopsy sometime within the next month to six months. And then there also can then be prostate cancer. That's why we're looking. And with the prostate cancer, you can have a number of types of prostate cancer. So there can be different grades, different aggressiveness, different numbers of the biopsies can actually be positive with different amounts. So there's a lot in there. We're gonna get that in the next video. I just want you to know that the different options out of this are no cancer, go back to life, we'll see you down the road. Um, possible concerning to cells that we want to pay attention to, or yes, cancer, and then going forward from there. What a lot of us, excuse me, what a lot of us care very much about is there is a difference between diagnosing prostate cancer and treating it, and I will get into that in the next one too. Because diagnosis of prostate cancer doesn't imply that we will be treating it. So a lot of us will say that it's important to get the biopsy so that we know what we're working with. So what I really want to get across is the biopsy is a completely abnormal thing in terms of setup and just how you have to go through it. But it is the best way to get access to the prostate and the diagnosis is important so that we know what we're working with. There are other ways to do a biopsy. It's called transperineal, which means that you're asleep. We actually go through the skin in the perineum, which is the area between the scrotum and the anus, and then biopsy the prostate that way. 
that is one of the earlier versions of prostate biopsies that for the most part has gone by the wayside since the ultrasounds got really good. There are some urologists who still do it, completely appropriate way, and if they bring that up to you, then they have their reasons and that's a worthwhile conversation. I hope all this has been helpful. I hope it makes sense. Send me your questions and comments. We'll talk to you soon. Take care of yourselves and your families. Bye, guys.